I had an experience this week that reminded me of a verse found in Exodus chapter 4 and verse 2, when the Lord said to Moses, What is that in your hand? To which Moses replied, A rod. Now, as we follow the life of Moses, we discover this rod showing up again and again. The first time, of course, he threw it down and it became a serpent. And that serpent was able to neutralize the force of evil in Egypt by swallowing up the rods that had turned into serpents by Jannies and Jambres, the court magicians, showing the superiority of God to the gods of Egypt. But later on, it's used to open up the Red Sea. It's used to turn back the forces of Amalek. You remember how he held it over his head and he was able to intercede for Israel with Aaron and Hur holding up his arms as he sat on a great stone. He used it for the bringing of water out of the rock and so on. And eventually that rod is called the rod of God. And so the question is, what's in your hand? Is it a surgeon's scalpel? Is it a carpenter's hammer? Is it uh, auto mechanics tools? Is it a children's storybook? Uh, is it a pencil or a pen? Whatever it is, God can do great things through something that the world considers very normal. Well, this story has to do with a situation here. We live outside the city limits, and so we have a septic tank, a septic field. And every so many years, it needs to be pumped. I called up the company, and they sent a man and his son. And you could tell both the man and his son, um, they were using all the equipment they had, shall we say. Uh, they they worked hard and diligently, and they did a great job. And um, I had I had paid them with a check, and I meant to come in and get some gospel literature, some Bible texts, and take it back and share the gospel with them and give them a little extra money to stop and get something for themselves to eat and drink. By the time I got back out, however, the truck was gone. And I just felt so disappointed. So I walked around to where they'd been working, and here I discovered lying in the grass was one of their tools. Now, I don't even know what the tool is called. I tried to find it, Googling it, but I just couldn't find it. Maybe some of you know what it is. You can put the answer in the comments section. But you see, it's a, sort of a, a two-pronged pry bar. And they use this to pull up the concrete slabs that sit over the opening to the, to the septic tank. And there it was lying there. It's a big, heavy piece of equipment. And so I picked it up and I walked around to the, the front of the house. I went in and called the company and said these fellows had left it there. And I thought to myself, God is going to use that pry bar to give those fellows the gospel. And sure enough, it wasn't a few minutes and the truck came right back up our driveway. And, uh, and I was able to share the gospel with these fellows and give them some funds and they were happy to get their tool back. And it just reminded me again that so often we overlook the little things that are around us, things we could use to take up my pen and write an encouraging word to a college student or, or to a missionary's child, uh, to, to write a thank you note to the elder in my local church or the brother who preached on Sunday, and to to use what it is in our hands. So often I hear people saying, well, I can't do that. I wish I could sing better. I wish I could play the piano. I wish I could do this or that. And Moses felt the same way. Like, you picked the wrong man. I can't do what you're asking me to do. And God said, I will be your mouth and your message. You just make sure your lips show up and your vocal cords and I'll look after the rest. And so a lot of times we feel like we're looking at the things we can't do instead of answering the question, what is that in your hand? What do you have? Remember the scripture, God does not require what a man doesn't have, but what a man does have, 
a Lord requires. And it may be you think, well, I wish I could preach like someone else, where in reality, what's needed is a brother who can change the leaky faucet on a widow's kitchen sink, or uh, fix the screen door on a single mother's home, or put up a little fence enclosure so her children don't run on the street. And it's as much holy service to do this for the Lord as it is to preach. Serving the Lord with gladness, with the equipment we do have in our hands. And if we are willing to do that, like Moses, shocked though he was, God can do supernatural things through natural means. And that's what he's looking to do. And he asks us to think about this. What, what do you have in your hand? Maybe a, a recipe that you can, you can make something for your neighbors. I think of Brother Ross Mackendy when he was probably approaching 80 years old and was so convicted that he didn't know his neighbors. He'd lost touch with his neighbors. And he found his mother's favorite muffin mix. And he made some muffins and went next door to the first home and said, look, I'm sorry, I'm a Christian. I should love my neighbors and, and prove it by my life. And I've lost touch with you. So I made some of my mother's favorite muffins. This is an old family recipe. And you know, it wasn't long until he was sitting in the living room, eating one of the muffins with a cup of tea and sharing Christ with his neighbors. And every week he made another batch of muffins. Maybe it was every day. I don't know. But he went the whole length of his street, visited all his neighbors. What is that in your hand? A muffin pan? Watch what God can do with it. So let's be open to that and say, Lord, I don't have much, but here it is. What can you do with this? And he says, you know, I made the whole universe out of nothing. You'd be surprised at what I can do with a muffin pan. So be encouraged. Ask the Lord to show you what is it you do have and use it for his glory in the week that lies ahead. And maybe you can send us a little note at something that the Lord gave you to do that really encouraged you as you answered the question, this is what I have in my hand, Lord, and I want to use it for you.